In this presentation, we're going to look at an ANOVA procedure, and I'm going to give you some of the details here. Uh, four standard solutions of chloride were prepared, and three titration methods, each with a different uh, method of determination, were used to analyze the data. Uh, the order of the experiment was randomized. Now, I've actually chopped a bit out of this question. What I would have usually given you is just a quick look at the data and sort of a rationale. But in this case what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to do something different. I'm going to give you a partially completed ANOVA table and we're going to work backwards and fill in what the table is there. Now I have source A and source B. So one of them is method and one of them is solution. But we don't know which one it is yet. Okay. So we have four solutions okay and we have three methods okay so the let's just get started here but we know the total sample size is uh, sorry just probably I uh, just clarify the total sample size is I probably should have put that in uh, there's one uh, realization one value per treatment group so we have 12 treatment groups one value per treatment group so we have 12 uh, observations altogether now um, that's important because we know what the total degrees of freedom is. Okay, so let's go there. So n is 12. So uh, the degrees of freedom, so the, the total degrees of freedom is going to be 12 minus 1 is 11. So we have two factors and there are four solutions. Okay, Sol. So that the degrees of freedom for a solution is 4 minus 1 which is 3 okay degrees of freedom for method is 3 minus 1 and that's equal to 2 okay now degrees of freedom total is equal to degrees of freedom for solution plus degrees of freedom for uh, method plus degrees of freedom for error so necessarily, degrees of freedom for error has to equal 6. So that's our first key breakthrough. Degrees of freedom is going to be 6. So let's write it down here. Source A, B, C, or sorry, what am I talking about? Error and total degrees of freedom. We don't know which one's A yet, and we don't, we don't know which one is B yet, but this is 6, and this is going to be 11. Now, in the question, we're also told the sums of squares. Uh, we give plenty of information there, but we actually can work out immediately that essentially what we have to do is just add all three of those up uh, to get the total uh, sums of squares. So we'll come back to that shortly. What I'm interested in right now is finding out what this value is. So we know this is 6 and we know this number so we can find out what the mean square is. So a little bit of calculator work. Uh, so that is going to be let's do this in the new page. So mean square for error or mean squared for residual also known as that is the uh, sum of square for error is not point not two eight one eight three the degrees of freedom for error is six so that works out to be the mean square for error is I'm gonna make it not point not not four seven okay I'm just going to keep uh, around at the four decimal places so let's put that in our table that's not our table that's not our table there we go so let's put it in here uh, sum of square not point not um, Two eight one eight three. Uh, I'm just going to keep this nice and uh, so the mean square is not point not not 
se uh, four seven. Okay. Now the test statistic is I've not left myself enough space here. But essentially, what I have to do here is I have to find out what the t I know what the test statistics are. Okay. So what I could do is that we have the mean square for error, and I have the I mean uh, I could have the test statistic for a. Okay, I have the test statistic for a. So I this number here is this divided by this. Okay, so let's work that out. Let's have a look at that. The test statistic for a is mean square for a over mean square for error, and that is one point. Uh, let's just uh, check that again. Over not point not not four seven. What is it again? Actually, two seven nine one. Two seven nine one over mean squared for a. So what I could do is actually just sort of uh, cross multiply there to get the mean squared for a. That is a bit of calculator work. Not point zero zero six zero. I'm just keep going to keep it to that for the time being. Okay. So I just be very mindful of the fact that I'm sort of rounding a bit. So. That's important because now I can work backwards and I can find out what the sums of squares for A is. Or actually, I know the sums of squares for A. This, the mean square for A is the sums of square for A divided by degrees of freedom. Okay? So the mean square for A times the degrees of freedom for A equals the sums of squares for A. Now, I actually know what the mean square is, not point not not six zero times degrees of freedom for A, and that is, what was the degrees of freedom for A? Not point zero zero, sorry, not point zero one two zero. Not point zero one two zero. Uh, again, uh, there's a little bit of rounding error going on there, but clearly you can deduce that degrees of freedom for A is going to be two. Okay, and necessary degrees of freedom for B is going to be therefore three. Okay, so let's go back to our table there. So that's going to be two. That's going to be three. So what was uh, what had degrees of freedom two? Let's see. I just find it there again. So method was a, it must be a factor a and solution must be factor b. So I'm going to write that in there. Method and solution. Okay. Now we know what the sums of squares are. Let's just put them in there again. Uh, not point two zero not point zero one two zero and this is not point zero zero six zero. This one here three the sums of squares for that was not point zero zero one one zero so we just call it zero uh, zero point zero one 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 zero point zero one one one. Now the mean square for that we have just have to divide that by three, okay? So the mean square for solution equals zero point zero one one divided by three. A uh, bit of calculator work. Not point zero zero three seven. Go a bit of moving around here. Zero point zero zero three seven. Now, would that give us the right test statistic for solution? Okay. 
So let's do that. Uh, test statistic for solution is 0 0.0037 divided by 0 0.047. Okay. Bit of calculator work. I make that to be 0 0.7872. Okay, so that's the test statistic I should expect when I check back to my table. Yeah, well, more or less, there's a little bit of rounding error going on there. Okay, so that is the table uh, completed. Okay, so I, I, I don't have enough room for the test statistics, but we can check them there. One thing I am missing is the total sum of squares. So I'm going to do that shortly. I'm just going to sort of explain why uh, in a second. We'll actually read the questions. Identify the two factors. So method was A was solution, B was, sorry, A was um, method and B was uh, solution. A is controllable. You can pick what sort of a uh, method uh, uh, you use the solutions should all be the same so the random error should be more or less essentially any errors within the solutions should be random errors okay finding the missing values for the sums of squares we've done that is there any test there's any significant differences um, essentially what we're doing there is just looking at these p-values okay is, are these p-values uh, significant no that means there's no significant effect for A, there's no significant uh, difference in any of the methods, and there's no significant difference in any of the solutions. Okay. And keep going. Compute the variance of all of the results. Okay. First off, I'll answer this question here. Now, I chopped a bit out, but just to fact the uh, uh, there's just a bit of a chopped out of the question. We can't uh, compute an interaction term because there is no, uh, there's only a single measurement per treatment group. Okay, so that's the reason we can't. There's only a single measurement per treatment group. If we were to get the uh, multiple measurements per treatment group, then we we we'd be able to detect an interaction effect. Now, compute the variance for all results. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, this is something everyone should know when you're doing ANOVA procedures. The variance of the response variable is SS total divided by N minus 1. So what we have to do is compute SS total. A little bit of calculator work again. So what we have to do here is add up these three numbers. So let's do that. So let's go back here. So I'm going to divide by 11. Uh, so when I add up all those numbers there, let's put this in black, I get 0 0.051292. Okay. And in, so let's go down here. So that uh, the variance of y is 0 0.051292 divided by 11. That is equal to 0 0.00466. Okay, just to leave it at that number of decimal places. So that's the variance of the response variable y. Uh, okay, so that's enough of that.